Miguel Easty, Phil is one of the original OG uh, Americans to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Started back in the 80s uh, with the DVDs, the Gracie in Action DVDs. Changed his whole life, set it up so that he could do Jiu-Jitsu, moved to California, trained and taught at the Gracie Academy, and now um, has four schools, Balance Studio schools in the Philadelphia area. So um, welcome to the podcast, my man, Phil Miglarese. All right, guys, I am here um, with uh, one of the pioneers of, um, uh, I hate calling it American Jiu-Jitsu, but Brazilian <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu in America, uh, Phil Miglarisi. What up, man? How are you? How are you, sir? I'm good. You're out in Philly, right? Right, man. Cold yeah. right today. Is it cold today? <clears throat> yeah, it's starting to get cold. Man, we, it snowed for us uh, a week ago. Yeah. That's... Yeah, we had our first snow. It doesn't help with uh, Jiu-Jitsu and sport <laughs> Dude, more. Colorado's so crazy, man, because uh, it snowed that night. Or, you know, like last Thursday it snowed. But in the, like when, at noon it was 80. So we went from yeah, 80. It's a little to, bizarre. Yeah, we went from 80 to 23 in, <laughs> like, in like five hours, not even. You know, like, so yeah, Colorado's a bit crazy. But uh, so, man, I, I just said it. Like you, 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 and, you and your brother, Ricky, uh, like from the beginning, you know, I, I remember, so how I got started in jujitsu and you, you know, the story I believe was, uh, uh, John Hassett and I were doing, uh, doing the same karate style and we went to the national tournament and he did like what was equivalent of the master's division. And I was like 18 or 17 years old, something like that. And, you know, he, he, we were both black belts, whatever, you know, and, and he dodged, like, I was like, you fucking pussy, right? <laughs> like, you pussy, you beat the shit out of all of us. And then you did the master's division, right? <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? I was like, are you scared of my young ass? What the hell? Because in, in those days, like, uh, uh, you sparred each other because you weren't really hurting each other. Like, even yeah. in the tournament, like, if you met your teammate, whatever, you sparred because who cares, yeah. right? It's just point fighting. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a pussy. Okay, come over to my house. Come over to my house on Friday. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to fuck you up, old man. You know? And man, I had no clue he was doing jujitsu. And I was like, oh my God. I think he was a wrestler too. Yeah, he wrestled. Like, you know, I thought he was going to try to wrestle me, but I was like, yeah, what's wrestling? Fuck your wrestling. You know? And the next thing I know, I'm, ta I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? Oh God. You know? And then afterwards he goes, yeah, that wasn't wrestling. That was this stuff called uh, Gracie jujitsu. And I was like, okay, I'm fucked. I need to learn that. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, John Hassett was our first black belt. Yeah. Well, you're, you're <clears> first so he's black like belt. fifth degree now, black yeah. belt. Damn, yeah. He was just, I think he hadn't even gotten his blue belt, or he'd just gotten his blue belt when this all happened. This was yeah. 1998, I believe. Wow. Seven, I, when did you start training in jiu-jitsu? So full-time, I started training in 99, <clears throat> you know? So yeah. how about, and you started, I mean, you started at the Gracie Academy, right? Like, No, I honestly, man, so I started, um, the second I received a tape in the mail in 1988. Oh, wow. Uh, the Gracie in action tape. You've probably okay. seen it. Yeah, of Gracie's course. beating everybody up. Yeah, and you uh, were in Philly at that time? What's that? You were in Philly. You grew up in Philly? I grew up in Philadelphia. Yeah, I was okay. born here. Um, I actually grew up in like a kind of combat family. Like okay. my, you know, going back to my great-grandfather, they're all boxers and kind of like street fighter kind of people. And... Uh, and, you know, it went down and we, we boxed since we were little kids, so like three, four years old. And then um, I got the tape. It was like in Black Belt magazine. So my cousin and I, we like ordered it and we we're excited to get it. And uh, all we did was mimic. So we saw these moves, duck a punch, grab, put people down, get them in a choke. Like we just mimicked everything. So we're probably like second degree white belt by the time I ever <laughs> stepped in a, on a mat with other people. Right. And it was like. <clears throat> coincidence too because we've no, we knew steve maxwell so my mom was an aerobics instructor and pretty much we knew steve since probably since we were born um so my mom worked with him and uh, he he came over our house one day and uh we were actually babysitting my mom was baby, babysitting zach maxwell world oh, champion God. black belt yeah, zach yeah, maxwell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and um he was like, man, you got to come in and try this Gracie stuff. You know, it's this now. I was like, what, what, you know, like he had a group and, and Steve was, maybe he was a white belt then, but, um, 
I went in and started, you know, started working out with, you know, as a child, I was working out with adults. So that was my first like class. With so when Steve. you say a child, how old were you? I don't know, 11. <clears throat> oh, wow. So young. So in 88. Yeah. I mean, so what year were you born? How old are you now? Uh, I'm, 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 I'll be 44. So I was okay. born in 76. 76. You're the same age yeah. as my wife. Okay. So in 88, you were, tw- yeah, you were like 11, 12 years old. Yeah. yeah. So I went like full force into it right away. And then just, I mean, like most of us, I, I guess, just caught the bug, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was, I just, you know, I always liked fighting. I was like martial arts fighting too. And I was like, man, this just works. Well, what I did too, my uncle was like a great boxer and they always played around with me. And I was right. a little kid and I just went under his punches, took him down and got him mounted. I'm like, this is, this was like two weeks after I started like, you know, playing around with my cousin and it just worked. So and so I think that's everyone like, so, I mean, I got beat up first and then I can like, remember my friend's dad, like my best friend's dad growing up, like heard that I had like started it, like, you know, messing around a little bit. Right. And, and we were in their uh, garage, like, and he had this like shed garage thing, like no cars were parked in it. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's like, man, you can't do that shit. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, what, you know, I was like, I bet you I can. And, yeah. and we like, he like came at me. And I was like, oh, damn. And then I choked him out, right? Like, and his throat hurt for like, you know, I was like, holy shit, this really works, man. And it's so incredible yeah. how, how well, like, especially for us who came up in a, in a traditional martial arts background, I would say, right? Like, like yeah. karate and boxing and all that stuff. Like, because you thought that was God. And then... You know what? I didn't. You didn't? <clears throat> okay. I didn't. No, I always thought, I was like, man, there has to be an easier way because... Like I'm the smallest one in my family. My brother, you know how big my brother is. Yeah. He was yeah. just, he got his nickname, the animal for my dad when he was five years old, because he was always an animal. He was always a big muscular, like, you know, my anomaly. little one's like that. My little one, I, he's got a 10 pack already. I'm like, dude, you're, <laughs> you're five. How do you have but a 10 pack? A 10 pack. <laughs> I, uh, but I, I was like, man, there has to be an easier way. Right. It really has to be an easier way. That's why I was like looking at martial arts and, you know, I always thought wrestling was great to work with. And then this jujitsu thing popped up kind of, you know, and then the way Steve, cause Steve didn't really teach. I mean, he taught jujitsu, but he was a blue belt. You know, if you look right. back and like, we're just blue belts trying to share this thing. I was a white belt trying to share what I knew. So that was the education and he's a really good educator, but he taught his wrestling first. So I actually learned wrestling. And then, uh, you know, that's kind of Steve's style was, was wrestling. And then I tried to be the squirmy little jujitsu, you know, more, sure. but, um, some definitely heavily wrestling influence too, just with the warm ups, tape, you know, all that stuff. And the play, it was, this was at max exercise, right? Max exercise, back way back. Yeah, yeah. Way back. I mean, so I was trying to go there. I remember yeah. after John beat me up, um, yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, really, there was nowhere else, man. That was like yeah. the, the Mecca that was, you know, I know so many people that started like, you know, guys that are famous in the UFC now and just famous teachers and they all like came and visited because there was nowhere else to go, nowhere. You know, Steve committed a good piece of his life at that point and, and real estate, you know, like he made a, his own gym there, but it was a fitness gym. It was right. an exercise private training gym. That's all it was. And started out with like 10 little mats downstairs and then he rented the upstairs and put the whole gym up there and every Gracie pretty much was through there. It was cool. Damn. And how did you guys get the Helson affiliate? Like how did um, you, not, not the affiliate, how did you hook up with Helson at, at, at what point in your, in your life, jujitsu life? Well, he, so it was a Gracie affiliate. It was no Horian Gracie, Helson Gracie, Hoist Gracie. They, you know, most of the jujitsu world knows they all split up and did their own thing, which is great because they <laughs> had their own flavor of jujitsu. Um, and now actually all those brothers still follow very closely what, what Elio Gracie did, all, right. all of them. <clears throat> um, but everyone came. Hoyler was there and Hel- everyone. I gravitated naturally to Helson because of a couple things. Um, he was re- I was a kid. I was just a little brat kid, you know, sitting right. on the side of a mat one day. And he was like, hey, come here, come help me with this private. And I was just like in shock. I'm like, I mean, back in the day, Helson's neck was about that big. He looked mean as can be, man. I mean, he's right. like, he's cool and calm and relaxed, but he looked mean and scary. <laughs> and then, uh, and I was like, man, mean and scary. And he's a nice guy. And like a gentleman, it reminded me of my family. So all the 
you know, all my, the males in my family are exactly like that. Shake your hand, you know, but you know, they can take your head off too. Right. So it was, uh, I gravitated in that direction. Um, but still like throughout the years, we were associated with the Gracie Academy, which, you know, it was an umbrella that right. hosted all of the, the Gracie brothers, at least under, um, uh, and the Machados too. Right. For a while. Under, Machado, yep. Yeah. Cause I met all them through the Gracie Academy and I, I didn't go to the Gracie Academy until I was 17 years old. So okay. I, I, I didn't, I never, you know, you got to remember that's five, six years from 12 to 13, 14. So, but we had Elio Gracie, like we did camps anywhere. He went, I went, cause if he was in America, I was there. I was just, you know, I was like the Gracie intern. I sure. Did anything I needed to do to be around this. So, yeah. This, so like, so you're up. still in school at this point, though, right? Yeah, I'm in school. I'm working. Yeah. I've always gotten up early in the morning and had projects. So that right. project okay. was, you know, get good at jujitsu to be able to share it properly. Right. <clears throat> so 17, you 17, 18, and Ricky moved with you? Because Rick, when, when did your brother jump in? When did he jump in with you? Right away? Or? Like, no, he's like three years behind or so. He says okay. he's three years behind, but I was always showing him stuff at home. So I think he started at the same time I started. And he was right. a little bit heavier into strict boxing right. then too. And then where I got into Muay Thai, whenever Steve opened his doors, I started Muay Thai on the same day I started like class jujitsu, not like okay. working at, not working in a garage or a basement. Okay. And then, um, so then, then you two, does he go to California with you at the same time? Or well, no? yeah. So well, before all that, so when okay. I was 17, it was like, uh, it was like a couple days after my birthday and uh, I was 17 or just turned 17, got into a car wreck, real nasty one. And, uh, it was a major setback to like, I was going to, I was about to go and do all this other stuff. And it set me back almost, you know, pretty much like a year, broke my hips, broke my back. It was just big problem so this so, was really early on i was i thought yeah. that I thought it was much later in jiu-jitsu mm -mm. no 17 man yeah i was oh, man. i always tell the story like i used to be able to do flying triangles in like one second on people's necks in competition. <laughs> seriously yeah. no one else did flying triangles i would go and shoo, i could jump right on and after that no more i had to change no i had an old man game at like 18 years old <laughs> but i had to watch my back i have herniations and you right, know, so, right. so much yoga and do that sort of thing so I had to wait a little bit before I got on a plane and left because my whole world shifted then. You know, I'm like, I, I had a plan to go to college right away, become a therapist, you know, like psychologist. Okay. And uh, do some jujitsu on the side, maybe with a little club or something. You know, I wanted to share those things, um, you know, balance that out. And my whole world shifted because I was laid up for a year looking at the ceiling, reconsidering my whole Your whole life. Future. Yeah. yeah. So I said, at a, you know at a very young age. Uh, yeah. So I was a little bit, you know, my mom tells me I was precocious and I was always jumping into things that I, you know. What, what was that like, man? Because just like, I mean, shifting from the jiu jitsu for a second, like yeah. at 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, we think we're indestructible. Right. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. I did. We right. all did. But you're like, fuck it. Let's go. So what was that like for you, just mentally and, and, and psychologically, I guess, to like realize how uh, fragile you were? At, yeah, at, a, a at an age, a car. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get hit directly by a car. I was in a car making a left turn. Boom, you know, gotcha. still, okay. still, pretty nasty thing. Right. And I'm lucky to be alive. If you, if you take a peek at that car, man, you think the person in the passenger side didn't didn't make it? Because you got hit on the passenger side. <clears throat> I got hit direct. Yeah, old yeah. car it was a '68 Mustang. They're like oh, wow. tanks too. Yeah, not yeah. A current car would have been a different situation. Um, I always knew I was. I never thought that I was indestructible, you know, right. especially dealing with combat from an early age, always people faster than me, you know, that could, you know, so, you know, since sparring, man, some little guy lands a little shot. You're like, woo. Right. You get a little That's point. Yeah. yeah. So I never thought like that, like indestructible, but as a child, you know, you're a kid, you don't think about dying. I hope right. not. So, um, it definitely shifted me from, um, you know, and that was around that time the UFC came out, you know, 93, so, uh, you know, like I thought I was, an, I, I mean, I was literally doing no, no holds barred fighting at 14. Sure. But people would come in the gym every Saturday. Maxwell had, you know, I don't know if it was publicized, but, you know, <laughs> I was in there with the smaller people. I was able to go at it with them and, you know, I could punch, I can kick, I can throw, I can, you know, I, was, I had the full all around sort of uh, way early on. I believed in all of it, you know, and it's like, there's a time for a kick, time for a throw. And, um, 
there was no doubt in my mind before then that I was going to go into what would, you know, with yourself and, and everyone like going into a UFC sort of mindset. Right. There's no doubt at 17 that that's what I was going to do. So I was, you know, but the UFC wasn't around. So sure. There was, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was around, but there wasn't, I mean, I remember when it was talked about, I saw sketches cause that was around the Gracie's when it was happening sure. and, and they, they funded the thing through students like Steve invested his wife and you know, they invested in early UFC to, to, to get the first couple shows off the, off the ground, which was no joke. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's what hooks every, you know, everyone watches. Yeah. Them. So it had like, a name, damn. not just no holds barred with head butts and down elbows and, you know, so for sport, yeah, they, they did the right thing. That's what they did there. What do you think about this? Like, so our students don't, don't have that. No, you're lost. Right? That's, like, that's, like, that's a lost art, man. That's a lost thing. Like, cause I remember yeah. it was the same thing for me. I like, actually we, teach the classes still, the no holds barred classes, but I have people, they have to sign agreements, but it's above and beyond necessary, uh, offense right you know, like you do a soccer kick you better you know you better have a good reason to do that to somebody in a in a life or death situation so i have like an nda and a and a secondary waiver okay. agreement that you understand that you're learning like if you headbutt somebody their head hits the concrete you have a problem yeah a big problem you know, a big problem you know so sport jujitsu is cool but you know jujitsu wasn't created for sport it, it for really sure I, and i love the sport don't get me wrong but i'm like yeah he any any professional can get can get bumped around on the street weird things happen so i i agree i love the sport i'm bare bowling like a motherfucker right now yeah. you know i figured yeah, out how fun. to bear and bowl it's, it's amazing it's fun who did i hear this I, I heard oh jocko was on um theo vaughn's podcast okay and he was just saying he was like man you can go into it as a beginner i'm you know i'm six degree black belt i go in and I, i'm learning something new every day i'm trying to work <laughs> on stuff i do it every day so if you ever feel like you're like oh i got this one i'm gonna move along like Oh, I understand. No. Jiu-jitsu. I want to move. It doesn't happen. Dude, my little, yeah. I, have, I, have, I have this little 19 year old purple belt phenom girl, right? She's, yeah. a, she's 120 pounds. And she was teaching me something the other day. Like, like I'm her teacher. Yeah. And she was like, okay, look at this. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, oh, damn, that's hot. That was, it was yeah. really cool. So there's always something to learn with it. Yeah. But, it's like, a, like, I always think of it like a university, like the dean of the university doesn't know everything, obviously. Sure. They have their advisors. And, and so what? What do you think about just like, so my, my experience is very similar to yours. Like we yeah. fought, like yeah. people, people came in the school and yeah. we fought like, okay, yeah. ready? Let's go. go, let's go. Barehanded. Barehanded. You know, bare, everything. It's a Not, mouthpiece. Yeah. No. Growing protector. Let's just do it. Let's, I don't yeah. even know if we put mouthpieces in all the time, right? Well, I didn't put a mouthpiece. Yeah. I never one time, not with a challenge mat. And, and no, when, yeah. I say, when I say it was every Saturday, it was every Saturday. Now, I went to high school in, in New Jersey, about a <laughs> half an hour, hour. What school? Uh, in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, near Princeton. Okay. And um, <clears throat> Friday night, I would come back from my parents. I raced home because I knew in the morning I was going at it with somebody. And no one understood. <laughs> and I never, I got hit once in my face the whole time. Right. But I knew I was taking people down. And, you know, sure. and I never really, I never, one guy bloodied up, but nobody else did I ever do that to because the concept was, Show them that it works, sign them up. And that's what happened a lot, you know? Right. My first challenge match, very first when I was 14, Hoist Gracie was in town and this guy went to fight Hoist. And the guy was like 130 pounds and I was like 150, whatever. And uh, Hoist was there and they called me on the phone. Now you got to remember, Hoist married uh, my brother's babysitter, Marianne Gracie. Okay. So uh, we knew Hoist, we got, you know, like we were all very tight, still are. And uh, they call, I ran in there, and then uh, the guy was in there, small karate guy. And I was like, all I could do was stare at his black belt. I was like, oh, man, I'm probably getting my butt kicked, but let's try it. Let's you go. Know? Yeah. And then Hoist took me back. He was like, listen, bite your teeth, put your hands up like Hoist style, right? And I still <laughs> right. bite like this. Run back, walk away, walk away, walk away, kick the knee, go in. He's like, don't think twice, bite your teeth, go in there. He's like, go. <laughs> like that. <laughs> and I'm like, and this dude's doing all this like crazy stuff. I'm like, man, I'm definitely gonna get kicked. But I was like, I'm gonna do what Hoist says. I backed up. I kicked. I didn't land, but he like moved away. Uh-huh. Boom, right on the floor, mount it. Done. Listen, I, I I forgot every piece of jujitsu that I ever knew. I I mounted on him. I was like, I don't know what to do. And I start going, bop, 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 like hitting him. <laughs> he, he taps out on the ground. He's like, one more time. And then Hoist like stood him up. He's like, before he's like, before you go, you need to know something. He's 14 years old. And the guy was just like, 
like I just got my butt kicked by a 14 year old kid. By a kid. I I was like a strong kid, but still at the same time. But still, you're 14. Yeah. And his. You don't have man strength. No, not even (laughs) close. I I don't even think. My brother was strong. I don't think I was the same. But the point, I I hit that guy. (laughs) You know, he (laughs) felt it. Um, But he signed up. He enrolled. He was a student for years. You know, right. and that, dude, that's how it was, right? You fought. That's how it was, yeah. like, like intro class was fight class. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> how John Hassett, I hope John Hassett, yeah. he'll tell yeah, you this. Him. No, I don't know it. Yeah, Go. I forget it, but he tells me every time I see him because that's, you know. Okay. Then basically, one of the, one of the methods <laughs> of uh, getting people interested in jujitsu is like, uh, hey, sit on me, land on me, put mount on me, okay? Hold me down. And I go, boom, knock them off. I'm like, all right, I'm going to hold you down, try to get out. Right? Right. Because that's like, all right, he just threw me off. Now he's on top of me. I should be able to get him off easily, but I can't. So I think I armbarred him and two of his black belts. I was a purple right. at the time, right? And um, and he de- he was like, sign me up. Because a guy like that, you know how rough and tough he is. So, yeah. I, like He needed evidence that this is going to work. And yes. a little skinny kid, he saw my belt. He tells me, he's like, oh, that's stupid purple belt. He's like, oh, <laughs> man. And then I armbarred him. Like, and he what? was a very good wrestler. Yeah, and he, right? and he was like, yeah. He was a very good wrestler, very good, you know, and he wasn't old at the time, right? Like, I mean, like he's, he's exactly 10 years older than I am. So right. if I was so, purple, I was still, yeah, he was. So, I mean, 20. he was in his thirties is what I'm saying. 30, it's not, maybe. yeah, it's not like he's like a 60 year old man. So yeah, yeah, it's the truth. So, but, um, but yeah, that was, that's like, I can remember. So for me, I remember uh, it was like five years later, six years later. Yeah. So it was a little calmer. We didn't do it every Saturday. And the UFC was around. They not, right. it was around, but it wasn't, it was banned. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Started, but still, right? It was kind of new this Hoist Gracie he, guy. Yeah, everyone kinda knew this Hoist Gracie guy. But we were the only school really in Colorado. So like I would like come in for the intro classes as a white belt and I would just like sit on the wall uh. and like wait for my turn, like salivating, like, <laughs> like, like a hungry animal, right? Like, come on, I'm all let me go, man. Let me go. Let me let, let it be my turn. And, you know, and like, I can, I mean, crazy stories, like karate guys coming in, like one guy used to be like, yeah, I, I can pull your ear off. I, I remember this with, with five pounds of pressure. It's true. It's yeah. true but you gotta, you have to rip my ear off though. Yeah. So like, I mean, like we too. let like my, like my buddy Jay let the guy jump on his ear, yeah, you know, okay. and yeah, it didn't come part. off, you know, yeah. like I, uh, man, I have a friend Jay, he's fucking nuts, man. Like. <laughs> Like we all have a J in our lives. Yeah, he. I mean, he used to let like <laughs> dudes that said they could poke his eye out. He used to let them mount them, uh, and he used to let them. He's like, "All right, put your thumb in my eye. That's what you're saying you can do, right?" And the guy would have his thumb right here, you know. Yeah. And he'd like when 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 that buzzer goes off, you get to poke my eye out, you know. And well, what and- I do, it, it's like I, I mean, I deal with this stuff. It's rare now. Sure, then never say, happens. Okay, but yeah, do eye gouges. I'm gonna do it back to you. Right. Is that okay? And they're like, yeah. I was like, look, you gouge me. I'm sitting on you. I'm going to, I'm going to put my hands through your head. You know, like you want to bite me? I'll bite you right back. You know, right. you want to elbow me in my groin. I could yeah. do a better one. I, I do that in my, yeah. so sometimes for beginners, right? Like when, uh, when they got to see sometimes like they, they don't understand, like just be calm for a minute when they're in a bad position, yeah. right? They're just freaking out. Blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So like sometimes I'll, I'll bring the beginner class in and I'll let them all like, w- like one at a time, just come and attack me however they want. I was like, you can do whatever you want. And I don't even care if you hit me, right? If you hit me, that's cool. We don't, you don't even have to tell me you're going to, yeah. but just be real aware. Everyone else who doesn't hit me, when I get out of the position, it's over. When I get yeah. out of yours, gonna, uh-uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the mountain. <laughs> you up, so like, do whatever you want, you better knock me out. <laughs> that's funny, man. So well, you were did, asking about Helson too. So like I said, I gravitated yeah. to him and then, um, I don't know what happened with the Maxwells and Horian Gracie, but uh, that dissolved that, that association. And okay. then Helson stepped in. And so it was a Helson Gracie association. It was the, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was the, I don't know any other Gracie affiliates that existed. I think that was the first one. Yeah. Henzo was doing his thing up in New York. But that's right? Henzo. But, he but that, he yeah. is Henzo. You yeah. Know, not a, <laughs> yeah. But he, it wasn't. Uh, Henzo was in Philly. Was he? Because we used to have, so I guess the first black belt in America was Craig Kukuk. Right. Craig and they Kukuk partnered. Came. Huh? Yeah, they were they partners. partners. But he came to Philadelphia. Craig, Craig actually worked with us first. Okay. So Where he, is Craig now? Is he even still doing it? I don't, like, I you don't, don't even know. hear about him. find him. Yeah. Right? You, you don't hear anything about him. Like after the Henzo thing blew apart, like that was yeah, it. I don't know. Of. I don't know. He was amazing, dude. 
Yeah. He had like, all I remember, I mean, I was low level belt when he was there, but like, I only remember his feet were like hands. So I yeah, thought it was had, cool. He and Henzo, I mean, put out DVDs and everything, right? Yeah, like, I, remember. I mean, they were, they were tight. Um, so moved to California. How long were you in California? Oh, the, uh, 17 on. So okay. for the 90s, pretty much. So oh, what wow. I would do at first, I would go out for three to six months, come back. So I had to make money to live. So I had sure. to come back, made money. But, um, you know, like at the time, it's, it's crazy, but like, I felt like, I think I was one of the only one of 10, 20 in America, purple belts. That's crazy to think, right? Yeah. So I would come back and it was be able to do it like a clinic for all these newbies and then make enough money, put it in the bank. I, I didn't spend anything, man. I just, I lived as low as I possibly could just to get back to California to train, you know? And at that time, everybody was at the Gracie Academy. There were very, you know, there were a lot of schools, but nothing compared to what it is now. And um, everybody who was anybody was there. Sure. <clears throat> so I wanted to get back, I wanted to roll. Because before that, I never trained with a black belt, really. I mean, besides a Gracie. Yeah, I can't. So, yeah. I, I remember so, the first time I trained with a black belt. It was, yeah, you're like, oh, my God. Those yeah. when, when I started them all, it was a purple belt. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, exactly. Yeah, he was purple. always right there. So, yeah, purple belts were God, man. Yeah. In America in the 90s, purple belts were gods. Yeah. <laughs> like, like there was there was not like gotta be a like, t-shirt for that because I never, yeah, right? I never let's make it. You know, uh <laughs> in the 90s, purple belts were gods because now yeah. it's like a purple belt, like maybe I'll let you teach my fundamentals class. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, I mean it's level, it's comfort. People come, you know, there there are black belts all over that are legit. So they right. you get you get used to it. Yeah. So um so you were, but, man, it's such a lost thing, man, like this. People want it so fast. Like, like what, like your story here of, yeah, you, you can't, you, you went out and did your thing in California and then you would mm -hmm. come home and just grind and work, work so that you it, could just have money yeah. to go back to California. And there was no, like, there was no living the big life. You weren't like, it wasn't bitches. I lived with four people Cal on a yeah. floor in California. I lived on with four people, beds. I didn't even have a bed. I had like milk crates. What are they called? Yeah. Egg, oh, terrible. Don't ever do that if you're out there listening. Just don't. No, do, do it. Get it. Get I, do it. Do it if it's what Four you really want. People in a one bedroom laying side by side, getting up at like the Gracie Academy. Like I was in a teacher training. And the, the reason why I went out there is because it was the real deal. Horian Gracie is one of the best teacher training instructors on the planet. Right. I mean, he, he had a real deal program. There was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to open up a school and do it right. So I wanted to go to the source and do it right. So that was, you know, that was it. And um, like I said, I would go back and forth. Um, I remember I was also a yoga instructor. So I was right. literally doing yoga since I was eight. So I was always, you know, those You're two ahead things. of the times for sure, man. Jiu -jitsu yeah, I didn't know. I just knew it worked. Jiu-Jitsu and, and yoga in the 80s? Jesus, nobody was doing Yeah, right? Yeah. Now I started Everyone, everyone's doing it now. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, but just, just the idea, bro, of like, you, you said you shouldn't do it. I disagree. You should a hundred percent do it. You think if, if it's what you want. Yeah. If, if it's what you want, like, you yeah. know, Mark Vetri, right? Philly, Philly guy, right? Yeah. Dude, he was like, he trains here. what's that? He trains here. Yeah. Yeah. He trains with you. And he trains, yeah. like he just bought a house in, in Boulder. So he, he, oh, he did, huh? Yeah, because he loves Boulder, yeah. right? He yeah, loves, he's gonna spend like a couple months of the year here. So when like we went to dinner at his house, the like when he was here over the summer, and he's like, "Man, I feel so bad because like you can't do like if somebody asked me how to become a chef, and normally what we do is we just tell our story if, mm -hmm. if we because we're successful. He's like, I can't tell them my story anymore because it's not allowed. He's like, I literally just hung outside of a restaurant until the guy let me wash dishes. Yeah. And then once he let me wash, and I did it for free. And yeah. then once he let me wash dishes, he showed me, I waited till he showed me how to cook a little bit. And yeah. I had no money. I like, I was literally like just sitting outside of restaurants all day so that I could learn. And then people would be like, fine, man, come, come, come cut the onions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and they, so, but that's not allowed anymore. And people don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Like, I had to cut it, the onions, man. I had yeah, a, you, I, yeah. I, uh, I started out just cleaning, being there, unlocking a door, whatever. I do. I still do it. I should just clean my whole office just right before we talk, just in case you wanted to see it. I was like, <laughs> this better be clean. I like the belts <laughs> on the wall. Are they yours? Yeah, yeah. That's, this is my side. My brother's okay. on the other side. Yeah, those are my 
Yeah, white belt to fifth degree black belt. To fifth degree black belt. So I'd yeah. retire the belts because it's like I think you should burn out black belts, train hard, so yeah, not have faded belts. Oh, you were, oh, so you move them on? You 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 have you always I wear them, them however many years I have them on, and then yeah, retire them, put them up there. Got you. I understand. And I have the wall, my Muay Thai shirts, Jiu Jitsu shirts, all that. So these are like my favorite things behind me. So I was gotcha. looking at it. Actually, see this over here is a cool one. Where is it? Oh, that. Okay. It's about a hundred years old, I think. Antique. Damn. That was given to me by my stepdad um, when I opened Bound Studios, my studio. Right. And uh, and he told me he was like, "Look, this is going to be you in the front, and that's your brother in the back, and then <laughs> you guys are samurais, you know." And I always say like, now I do that. It's the opposite. My brother's in front. I'm in the back, you know. I let him work for a couple of years. <laughs> no, but he does a great job, man. My brother, it's a good, it's a good partnership. So it works well for you guys because a lot of times that, you know, like. Yeah, we listen to each other. That's the right. good thing. It's open, you know, if he's wrong, I tell him. If I'm wrong, he tells me and then we accept it and move along. Yeah. And, um, so when, when did you open Balance? So you, you were in California um, come back and when did Balance so, open? Um, 2002 officially okay and uh, i got back from california around 2001 or 2000 and um when i was in california the reason why i moved and stayed there for so long so my last um you know like i said i would bounce back and forth for like seven eight years and then i stayed for like two years plus because elio gracie moved to california and i was like the hell with this man i'm gonna take you know i got jealous of the gracies they, that was their dad. You know, I was right. like, man, I want to like, I want to, I want to feel this. I want to see what it's like to be around him. And man, he worked all day long. Like we were folding towels together. Like, and when I say I was in there from seven in the morning to seven, eight, nine at night, I was break for lunch, go back to jujitsu and folding towels and cleaning and all that sort of stuff and teaching and learning. But Elio Gracie was there. So I stayed there. I think he left around like 2000 back to Brazil, something like that. Gotcha. So, um, Got back here and uh, within a couple of years, um, open balance. I just had one school for years. Was it just you or did, was Ricky in on that in the beginning too? In the beginning, it was just me. Okay. And then, um, and then he became, like he decided to do jujitsu more professionally at that point. And, you know, of course he had a space in the gym and then, you know, got super busy, man. Because I, I, I dug into the, the business side, you know, I'm like, man, I have a studio, but how to... I was like, can a martial artist be successful and actually make a decent living and eat and, you know, and not sell out and not kind of, sell out. Not sell that was out, the biggest right? thing, man. Yeah. I'm like, man, I came, I still, I, I still like, I try to keep the culture of what we have here, the way I came up. Like, you know, for some schools we, they bow in and they, you know, uh, have different like culture, but here it's the same as I started. You shake my hand. My name is Phil, no grandmaster, anything, you know, things like that. Like, but listen, I never had to call Elio Gracie, Grandmaster Elio Gracie. You want to right. be called Elio Gracie. My name is Elio. I never called him Elio. I never called him. It was right. either Mr. Gracie or like, because I could call him Elio, I didn't still. Sure. Um, we still, we still good here? Yeah, we're good. I got you. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's that respect level culture. So I wanted to bring that into balance too with, with what we were doing. So <clears throat> it's such a hard thing, right? Because it's super important. You're totally fine on my end, bro. Okay. You hear me? Yeah. Cool. Cool. It's such a hard thing, right? Because it's so important to me. Like, uh, and it's, I know it's important to them all as well. Like, like, because every, a lot of times, like big schools, they say like you lose, uh, they, they don't produce any good students anymore. Like, like they just right. suck. Like your student can't, can't really, like that's not doing jujitsu. Right. And that's that's one of like yeah like the money's like the money and and the and the big schools and and, and all of that it's cool but if your students are awful then then to me you sold out right it's like a right. reflection of the you know total so product. and and for sure you're going to get a ton more people that have nothing that want nothing to do with competition and that's right. fine and they don't want to fight they don't want to come near a challenge match anymore which is they don't have yeah. to right jujitsu yeah. has kind of changed in that way so that's totally cool but they have to have the ability to, if necessary, in my opinion. Yeah, I hear you. I, I, I totally agree. So um, when, so how many schools do you have now, man? 
Uh, Philadelphia, we have technically it'll be four soon in okay. Philadelphia. Um, three functioning right now. One building I have that I'm changing over right now. <clears throat> and then um, affiliated schools, there's like 40, 40 something schools affiliated. Some where we have ownership, some we license, you know. So it's like a, you know, a chain, not, not a normal affiliate. Right. When, so, when did you, how was that process for you? What was that like from going from, you know, you're a, you're a kid and a teacher to like, yeah. being like all right, I'm going to make, like, I'm, this is what I'm going to do for my life. So I would like yeah. to like have Here. a successful life. What yeah. was that like? Here. So I've, I've always been involved with technology too. So some computer work, some programming and stuff like okay. that. Since I was a little kid as well, like 10 years old, building computers, things like that. Um, I was always interested in business, but didn't know how to run this thing. So I had the luxury of being like, you know, early black belt too, when I opened the school. So I made trips to, uh, so Mike Garagusto helped me out too, big time. He's the best. And, um, do you still talk to him? Yeah. 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 We chat every once in a while. See our, our conversations are hours. So if I Absolutely. call him, we can catch up for hours and once a year, like he's great. Right. So he's one of my business mentors, but I also had the ability to <clears throat> move around the country and teach. I said, I'll teach a free seminar. Show me how this works. So all the best mm-hmm. schools in the country, pretty much that, that ran, it doesn't matter what martial art, karate, it just, I just did seminars there. They said, oh, this is what you do first, second, and third to, to, to run a good school. So, <clears throat> um, and the other piece is like we kind of already had, like I really truly want to build and develop good students and good people with good character. I want to go to work every day and know I'm going to be around like, you know, great people. So that, that piece we had, but was the, the structure of it. With my background in technology, I was able to build it fast by myself. So it saved a lot of dollars. Sure, sure. So we had like one of the earliest websites too, you know, not many people had a website. So we got ahead quickly. Again, man, like, so <clears throat> like your ideas here of like the idea that you just talked about a second ago is normally everybody wants to get paid. Yeah. Like, you you want to go and you want to get paid to teach a seminar Yeah, and pick the person's brain Yeah, and, and gain, right. Where you were like, look, take the money away. I don't want to get paid. I want it. I want the information. Yeah. Right. And that's such a, a, it's a different mindset of what people like to do now. You're like a money. I still do it. Now we yeah. do it. So between us, I'm all, we share ideas and we're like, Oh, that worked there. Maybe we'll try it here. You know, you're, you're sharing solutions to, you know, it could be as common problems. And dude, for me, I don't teach, I don't, I don't take money to teach. Like, nah, I, do. like, no. I, like I don't, like, I don't, I don't get paid per class. Right. Yeah. If, if somebody wants a private, uh, uh, I, I don't like doing private lessons, but, I, but if somebody like is coming into town and, and they want a private, I'm like, yeah, sure. But we're going to donate some money. So let's figure out where this money is going to be donated to. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I, I never want to attach my dollar to my hour of work. Cause when I do that, I feel like, uh, like, you know, you're a sixth degree black belt from Helsin and Gracie, right? Like, I mean, how much could you charge an hour? You could charge a lot. Tell me what I should charge. Cause I never know. I don't know. The don't same char- thing you do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm like, Hey, yeah. Like, Hey, um, man, look, it's 200 bucks. You're not going to pay me. And here we go. If I was actually going to get paid, if you wanted me to teach that out, I don't know, man, 500 bucks. Uh, like, yeah, that's good. I'll just you do know? that all day. I'm closing my schools. Done. Exactly. But then that sucks, man. Then you're, you know, like yeah, you hurt your body. You can get beaten down because you're, you know, part teacher, part punching bag. And then you're tied to your dollar an hour. Then like, then you're just going to like mm-hmm. literally that all day. And there's no way to expand. Some people love that though. Some people love it. I you know, I have, I have people in the school. They just love, they have a little mini business within my school teaching privates. And that's, man, it's good. But yeah, it's not for me. I have different things to focus on like you do. You know, I have to, you just, just in one city, I have to divide my attention into four. Right. And to deal with the, with the, with the issues there, you know, right now I'm updating all the schools, all the tech, every single one of them. So I I click on a button. I can see all the schools. I know what's happening. I see who signed in. Like, sure, sure. We're doing this. I'm working on this Easton online project where we're, yeah. We're making digital courses. So I had to like learn how to make digital courses uh-huh. so that, so, yeah. so that we're going to just, you know, not give it all away. It's, you know, it's going to be a, you can buy it. People can buy it. Schools can buy it, but exactly our processes, exactly yeah. how we, how we do everything. The first one is going to be like how to take someone from a, a lead 
to a to a member. So it's going to go yeah. through sales. It's going to go through how to talk. Oh, to you're somebody. saying the business side. The business side. Oh, I hear you. That's a good. I haven't done that. I, I yeah. consulted a little bit, but I haven't done any digital. I don't really want to. Our affiliates. I have. I have certain pieces of uh, how to. Right. But not to the outs. You know, not, not, no one else really. Dude, this was. I had to learn. This was a a three month process of learning how to make digital courses. Yeah. And like I, so I started at the beginning of the year. So hopefully by the end of the year, That's we're right. going to have the first one out. But yeah, like you were saying, I don't have time to teach a private lesson. I like a, like a day of private lessons. No way. Mm -hmm. It's too hard now. Yeah. It's no way. And look, the, let the, let the younger belts do it. It's a great way for them to learn. Yeah. No, it's a great way for them no. to learn how to teach. Let them go try to teach a white belt, a Baron Bolo and see that they can't do anything. Yeah. And that the white belt, I have like, a white belt that's really good at Baron Bolo, but he can't like get out of the mount. Yeah. He can't. I was just about to yeah. say, but he can't get out of the mount. Right. Yeah. So God forbid his Baron Bolo fails and now he's <laughs> fucked. Right. He's just <laughs> fucked. So like, hey, but, man, but, it's a legit move. It's great move. It's just, you need to like any other thing, you need to train it and know what. So I have people visiting here all the time, especially this, I'm sitting in like our headquarters right now. It's okay. my office. So people drop in, my brother and I teach classes and they're, you know, these are real deal competitors, real deal mm -hmm. world champions. And I went with uh, one guy, this must be like two months ago. Uh, he knows who he is out there. He's a freaking great competitor, you know, and I, and I had to fight my ass off here. Like I said, I'm 44, he's 25. So came yeah. in, it was like, Hey, Hey, I was like, Oh, I guess we're doing this today. Right. Very good beer and bolo, same size as I am. Right. And then, uh, but I have this one thing that I do old school that he called it. I got a way of like laying my weight, pulling myself back and I'm flexible too. Like From the so yoga, it's, yeah. it's weird. And then I just kept running by his, his beer and bowl and like nobody don't like literally nobody does, but just a certain way. And then, you know, I'm bigger and I know how to pin. So like I said, so some old school beats the new school, unless yep. the new school is totally trained with the old school in mind. I think like, yeah, I like, God, I don't see and anybody. If no one's doing an old school. What happens, like you know, in ten years, it it it, it comes back, you know, to like yeah. general interest, and uh, it's now relabeled to a new school move. So I For think sure. there's a like cycle, man. Well, dude, Eddie Bravo did that, right? He called Gordo's half guard sweep new school, and yeah. it's it's just the Gordo half guard series from yeah. the '80s. Yeah. Like that's not new school, bro. That's old school. That's yeah. That's Gordo's. I learned that series like third hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, people, uh, people, uh, learning it from him and, right. you know, so I, I learned, I guess, it wrong. I guess I learned it secondhand because Gordo was one of them all's teachers. Oh, that's right. That's so right. Like, yeah. He would come and do seminars and yeah. So like I learned it first from them all and then Gordo would come. Mm -hmm. So like when, when Eddie Bravo put, put it out in new school, I was like, uh, like I, you got to get that. Are you good? No, that's okay. I, I, I'm trying to stop it. I don't even know how to stop God, it. No worries. Um, so, yeah, like the new school man, but something like I have to say, Gordon's pretty solid. Gordon's Gordon. Gordon Ryan? Ryan. Yeah. Oh, crap, yeah. Yeah, he seems pretty solid with, yeah. as far as like, I don't necessarily like the antics, but as far as the, the understanding. Oh, hey, this is what I said. Someone asked me about it the other day. I was like, as, as, long, as, the, as long as the antics are real, I don't care. If he's right. really like that, I, I don't know him. I never met him. I shook his hand one time. Right. But if he's really like that, then it's fine. If he's not, then he's, you know, it's, it's whatever it is, it is. He's, he's doing a great job and he can back it up. So he can back it up. That's the thing. Yeah. No, he can for sure yeah. back it up, man. He can for sure <clears> back it up. What do you, um, what do you think? Like, so, I mean, you said if it's real, if, if that's really how you are, then it's cool. But like, what, what about the marsh? And I'm, I'm not, picking aside i'm just asking you your opinion what about like the, the martial art aspect of it like we you know this is a martial art and we are trying to better people's lives why do we have to talk shit like that yeah well is it martial arts is what what we're that's doing the fighting arts? that's combat that's fighting over there and then what happens happens you know like you have i mean look at ufc weigh-ins you know people are right they, they do stuff like that all the time sure, sure. but um <clears throat> you know it definitely stirs things up you do it you're going to be, you know, you're going to be memed a thousand times and you're going to keep getting seminars, getting invited to things, causing, you know. Right. Especially if you're backing it up, which, which he is, right? Yeah. Which, you don't which, hear about many people that are doing that and not backing it up. You hear nothing. Yeah. Well, because they fade away. You can't. <laughs> right? fade away. Like, yeah. You, like, you, you know, 
uh yeah if, if you talk all that if you talk a lot of shit and then and then lose in the first round then yeah i'm all, i'm always in fear of talking crap man I have to right. eat it at some point at i'm some like point. i don't want to you know that, yeah that's the look it's gonna come for it's good, like whoever's on top right now when you're talking shit it's coming for you oh there's a cycle you yeah because like, father like, time's coming father time yeah. wins yeah i mean not to be weird or anything, but I remember back in the day where I was like a mini Gordon Ryan. I was the only right. one winning and I was beating everyone's butt, you know, and right. everyone was amazed, but zero internet. Sure. You know? <laughs> but I'm saying I know right. the feeling like, and then now I'm 44, you know, I can hold my own, but I'm not that level, you know? We can't be. No, it's, yeah, it's if you could, it's, it, it would be, I mean, that would be interesting. A 44 yeah. year old guy going in there, just wiping it all up. Man, I, I got to do ADCC this year, right? And yeah. Like, so a lot of my students are like, are you ready to win? And I'm like, look, I'm going to try my very best. Yeah. But I'm 40. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm like, well, that was great, man. I was rooting. Dude, it was stoked. I was stoked to do it. It was, it was, it was the only thing that I hadn't been able to accomplish. Yeah. You know, like in my, in my professional fighting career. Mm -hmm. And like to do it, it was, it was an amazing experience. But like, look, we all know what it is. 40 year olds don't win that. Yeah. Like 20 year olds win. They do. That. They, they can say whatever they want on that podium. They, they can. They can, they can. Whatever <laughs> gestures they want to make, man, you deserve it. <laughs> I, I, I'm fine with it as well. Yeah. You, know, is, you know, if you are backing it up and, uh, and I, I got to give, especially somebody like Gordon, I got to give him some credit because he is spreading the art. You know, he's not yeah. holding it back. He's not keeping secrets. Now, him. everyone that I know that knows him says he's a really super nice guy. Yeah. I mean, I've never so whatever heard. it is, man, he's, he's, he's selling the, uh, selling but he's advancing stuff. it, right? He, he's pushing yeah. the art forward. It's not like he's like hiding. He's like, he's making a DVD right now with, and sure he's going to make money, but he's making a DVD. He's going to, he broke down every single match of his. Yeah, and listen, I saw one of his DVDs, one of my guys here in the office, he's been breaking it down and I saw his actual method. And the way he speaks, he's, he's a great teacher too. Great teacher. Yeah. He, he, he breaks it down nicely. So, Hey, Whatever. More power to him. Yeah. yeah. More power to him. When it becomes him. more important, when you realize who you're affecting and who's watching, and when it becomes more important to act a certain way to influence those people, you know, he's a kid too. You know, he might, you know, he may use this for, for his fame for greatness too. Like, not that he's not now, but you know what I mean? Like something sure. more, more worldly and non-jujitsu. Dude, it's so crazy how that happens sometimes. So the, uh, the, I wrote, a, you know, I wrote a book called the gospel of fire seems the podcast. And I worked with this company called scribe mm -hmm. and the, the CEO of scribe is this guy named Tucker max and Tucker max was, he's a New York times bestselling author of writing sex capade books. Oh. like his personal sex capades and how much of a piece of shit he was. And he admits it like he, in the book, he's like, I'm a total piece of shit. So like when, when, when I talked to them the first time and they told me who the CEO was, I, I just like pulled back. I was like, right. um, this is not my message. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, right. like this isn't, this is not who I like. No, this guy, like I read three, I mean, I would read three of his books when I was in my twenties. I thought they were fucking hilarious, but they were awful. Right. Like they were like, like filming a girl and she yeah. doesn't know it. Like his buddies in the closet filming the sex. And you're just, and, and like, you're just like, Oh my God, dude. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? But he's like, he like used that. And now like he's totally changed. Yeah. Right. He's totally changed. He has this platform for people to write books and he's super authentic and genuine and like, not that that other, I know, not I that, know that other thing was ever like okay. Right. It was not okay to do that, but he, he moved it into something bigger and better. Yeah. He left the old guy behind. So it's, it's always interesting. So yeah, we'll see where these guys that are talking a lot of shit on the internet, we'll see where they end up. Well, to his, to his defense too, Gordon, people pick on him, but he doesn't take it. Right. You know, like he gets so much crap online that you just imagine what it is on his end. People like talking crap and they don't, they don't know him. And then maybe that's just a gesture to them. Sure. Yeah. I mean, seriously. For sure. Yeah, I, I hear you. So that, I, you know, so you, we don't know what's going on, on his side. He, and also too, you know, I know the realities of like, um, let's say quick social network fame. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I read about these things. I see like reports with kids that like, you know, get into 
uh, you know, they become like YouTube superstars in a month, how that changes your whole world. So there are sides that we're not prepared for sometimes, especially too, you know, he's in his twenties, you know, and you don't know know. what the other side's like. We don't know how to handle this social media thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like us as a whole generation society of people, we have no clue like what, like for our kids and, and, and all that. Like Like the very few products don't come with instruction manuals. Right. Right. So they go here, here's a product, do what you want with it. Like that sort of thing. I mean, the internet was that, but there are very few things you can buy online without instruction manuals. Except for online. Yeah. (laughs) Like how (laughs) how to like appropriately handle like social media for your, for your brain. And And it's evolving. So, and that's the other thing, like there's no mastery in, in things that are in an evolutionary phase, like jujitsu, let's say, for example, you have your core stuff and your evolutionary stuff. There's no one could be a full master on all of it. No, you know, that's why I, I wanted to propose, like, I think all the labels for instructors, like a professor, like, I think we got to have to leave that one. I, I don't, that doesn't make sense for an American, you know, you can say instructor, right? Really, you know, so what, what, what are your thoughts there? Go ahead. No, I'm saying the word professor doesn't match like, you know, what is it at a second degree black belt? You're considered professor or something like that. Right. I think so. You have professor to get a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I think the labels have to change. Why? I don't know. Professor doesn't make sense. Does it? I don't know. People call them. So, like, so. We do the professor thing at the school. Yeah. Like yeah, all, yeah. all the, all the, if you're a, a teacher, Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're not a black belt, your coach. Yeah. And if you are a black belt, we, it's professor. Professor at black belt or second at, degree at black belt. We at have black belt. at black belt. Just just to keep it simple, right? Yeah. Like to delineate the the black belt teachers from the from the white from the color belt teachers. Right. Um, yeah. So the um, the traditional belts, just as it was told to me from the Gracies, like I earned my professor bars like right away because I knew the self defense system. I already knew that stuff as a purple belt. Like I saw out. Ricky teaching his daughter the self defense. Like going yeah, to, yeah. Like, well, on we Instagram saw, we the, did the whole program, man. Right. So the school is like strong with people that you know they know all that stuff, and then we have like a whole crew that just loves the self defense. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. So, but I think it's a uh, limited in, um, that, that needed an evolution because of, um, you know, what's happening in society. They need a little bit of a touch and Rick and I are going to be playing around with it next year. Okay. So he just had a knee surgery. So we're not putting much stuff on video right now, but like, like you're doing what you're doing with the video. That's our, uh-huh. it's your selfdefense.com is our major push. So, man, it's, um, you can just touch so many people, right? Yeah, that's what the general population can do. Everyone can do that. The beer right. bolo, take 1% of just the, anybody interested in jujitsu, take 1% of them. That's right. That's the market there. I don't know. And man, it's just, it just helps people. Yeah. It just helps people. Like this course that I'm, that we're making, man, it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to, it's going to cost something, but it's not going to be $30,000. You're saying for schools? Yeah, for schools. You're bettering the world there because yeah. someone's introduction to jujitsu could be more friendly, more professional, cleaner, as it should be. As it should be. Yeah. It's the best thing in the world. In my opinion, jujitsu is the greatest thing that's on the planet as far as like a thing to do. There's nothing yeah. better. Like like you do jujitsu. Not coffee. Uh, coffee's coffee's coffee is there. Dude. there dude i get so much shit about coffee now bro but i, I just embrace it <laughs> like, like, dude, i'm not fucking around. i probably shouldn't tell this story but i'm telling it so i made a coffee i made that coffee video where amal and i went around like we were looking for coffee and like we walked out i walked out of a couple places because they sucked um anyway we, we put it like we made a video and put it out and <clears throat> dude somebody complained <laughs> You know, one of us always like, a complaint. They're like, man, you know, I sell shitty coffee and, yeah. and you're, you're out there knocking shitty coffee. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude, Starbucks sells shitty coffee and they crush it. Like some yeah. people like they like, stepped it up, though. They know they sell some, you know, things. Yeah, that you but look, if, if, you, if you're going to ask me what beer I want to drink, I want to yeah. drink Bud Light or Shock Top. That <laughs> shit sucks. Like I know that everyone who's like into yeah, beer so has to be shitty jujitsu then. Yeah, the, All right, uh, not shitty jujitsu. No, 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 no shitty jujitsu because that can ruin people's lives. Right. Yeah, right? that can ruin the hurt. whole experience. Yeah. Nobody right. likes shitty jujitsu. Some I love shitty beer. It's yeah. okay. I don't like shitty coffee. I'm gonna talk about not drinking shitty coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it has to be done right, man. 
Yeah, man. I, we have, uh, I don't know if you have La Cologne out there. La Cologne, no. Coffee, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, uh, it's literally like I have this building here. I'm in Fishtown in Philadelphia, the neighborhood. Okay. Right across the street in Fishtown, literally right across is La Cologne Coffee headquarters. Right before this podcast, I was sitting with the uh, founder, uh, okay. Todd Carmichael, and we were talking about shitty coffee. Yeah, man. 